Well, folks, it seems like things are getting worse surrounding Bob Menendez. I mean, not only did he have gold bars in his house, then he claimed that he did that because he was a Cuban Cuban expatriate. And that's what you do if you're deeply worried, just stash gold bars in your house in New Jersey. Now, it turns out, according to The Record and The New York Times, Nadine Arslanian Menendez, the wife and co-defendant of recently indicted Senator Robert Menendez, struck and killed a man while driving in New Jersey in 2018. Both of those publications, citing police reports and police dash cam video, reported that Nadine Menendez, who was dating the senator at the time, was found by police in the small borough of Bogota to be not at fault in the crash because the victim, Richard Coop, was jaywalking. She was allowed to leave the scene. Her Mercedes was severely damaged. She was not taken into custody or tested for drugs and alcohol, according to the record. She was later joined at the scene by a retired cop from nearby Hackensack, who told cops he didn't know her, but he was doing her a favor because she was a friend of his friend's wife. The accident, though not at circumstances, was mentioned in the indictment against the senator, his wife, and three co-defendants. There is no indication that Senator Menendez's name came up during the police investigation of the crash. The witness at the scene told the New York Times there appeared to be a lot of secrecy and that he heard Nadine Menendez repeatedly tell officers she was going to call someone. Um, So it is weird that they did not like even bother with a blood alcohol test. Isn't that strange? Like you hit a dude and kill him with your car. Shouldn't you be expected to be tested for drugs or alcohol at the time, even if the person was jaywalking? Apparently, she has a history of several traffic offenses. She was charged at the same time. She was charged with an offense in Englewood in 2016 about driving using a handheld cell phone. In 2012, she pled guilty to failure to observe traffic control device, paying 85 bucks. She was charged with the same device in 2005. In 2007, she pled guilty to improper passing. So again, not not the world's best driver. Does that mean, again, that she's guilty of like a hit and run or something like that? She didn't run. She stayed. But is the, is it weird that that if you hit someone and kill them with your car, that you don't get any sort of blood alcohol test? That That does seem kind of strange to me. We have a ton on our schedule, a lot going on, a lot on our plate. But there's one thing you can take off your plate by putting great meat on your plate with Good Ranchers. What is that? Well, shopping for meat. You care about your family eats, so does Good Ranchers. That's why they've spent years building relationships with local farms to source the best 100% American beef, chicken, pork, and now wild-caught seafood, the best of the land and sea can now get conveniently delivered to your door. Right now, they're offering two years of free ground beef to anybody who subscribes. That is a $480 value. That is two years of free, high-quality ground beef and a locked-in price. No other meat company guarantees you 100% American meat plus that locked-in price because no one else is good ranchers. You can save on your beef, chicken, and pork by locking in your price today. Every single steakhouse quality cut is individually wrapped, flash frozen to make mealtime super easy. So make it easy for yourself. Go to GoodRanchers.com today. Use my code Ben for 25 bucks off plus free ground beef for two years. Remember, subscribe to any box, lock in your price on America's best meat in a time of inflation. This is a great deal. Go to GoodRanchers.com, promo code Ben, get over 500 bucks in savings. Subscribe to Good Ranchers today. American meat delivered. Imagine for just one second that you are living your life. You're in a, in a really nice kind of area of, of the world. And suddenly you are approached by an elderly gentleman who informs you that an object in his hand carries the power to destroy the entire world. And now it is your job to carry that ring all the way to a volcano and throw it in. Now, at first you might think that's crazy, but then he proves it to you with signs and visions. At that point, you might, before you take off from the Shire, you might think about getting some life insurance. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies and find your lowest price. Let me tell you from personal experience, it's great to get life insurance. You get that off your plate. You feel a lot better. God forbid something happens to you. Your family is taken care of. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies starting just 292 bucks per year for $1 million in coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid those unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius's licensed agents work for you, not the insurance companies, which means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can actually just trust their guidance. No added fees. Your personal information is going to remain private. Your loved ones deserve that financial safety net, and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head on over to policygenius.com slash Shapiro or click the link in the description. Get your free life insurance quotes. See how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Shapiro. Joe Biden continues to be terrible at his job. He was asked yesterday, how to confront family members who are MAGA family members. And here was Joe Biden at his most convincing and charismatic. How would you advise those people who do share your concerns, but may be wary uh, about talking to a MAGA parent, neighbor, coworker? How would you advise them to do that? Vote, vote. But I also think that we should be engaging people more in, in, are, are, are not not be worried about our neighbor. Talk to him. Sit down and say, "What, what do you think?" Well, well I, I and not get in arguments, but say, "This is what you say." This, but how about this? And force people to get in, in a two-way conversation. Wow. 
That is that is riveting stuff there from the dead president of the United States. When they used to say dead presidents, they meant, you know, the guys on dollar bills. Now we actually mean the president of the United States, who is a walking zombie at this point. Meanwhile, the economy headed for disaster. According to the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. has long been the lender of last resort to the world. During the emerging market panics of the 90s, the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2009 and the pandemic shutdown of 2020, it was Treasury's unmatched capacity to borrow that came to the rescue. Now the Treasury itself is a source of risk. No, the United States isn't about to default or fail to sell enough bonds at its next auction, but the scale and upward trajectory of U.S. borrowing and the absence of any political corrective now threatens markets and the economy in ways they have not for at least a generation. That is the takeaway from a sudden sharp rise in Treasury yields in recent weeks. The usual suspects can't explain it. The inflation picture has gotten marginally better. The Federal Reserve has signaled it's nearly done raising rates. Instead, most of that increase is due to the part of yields called the term premium, which has nothing to do with inflation or short term rates. Numerous of factors affect that term premium. Rising government's deficits are a prime suspect. Deficits have been wide for years now, so why should they matter right now? The better question is, what took so long? That larger deficits push up long-term rates had long been economic orthodoxy. But for the past 20 years, interest rate models that incorporated fiscal policy didn't work. Noted Ricardo Trezzi, former Fed economist. That's understandable. Central banks had kept interest rates around zero while buying up government bonds. That was inflation. It was quantitative easing. They just pumped money into the system. Private demand for credit was weak. This trumped any concern about deficits. Mark Weedman, senior managing director at BlackRock, says we had 25 blissful years of not having to worry about this problem. But today, central banks are worried about inflation being too high. They've stopped buying. In some cases, they're shedding their bond holdings. Suddenly, fiscal policy matters again. So again, as I've said a thousand times, whatever goes up starts to come down. And that is true when it comes to the American economy. When you inflate things, they tend to burst. When you inflate a bubble, it tends to burst. Right now, no one wants to buy U.S. debt. Why does no one want to buy U.S. debt? Well, the answer is, because there are a bunch of answers. One reason is because if the Fed, to fight inflation, has to continue increasing rates, that means that the bond that you bought yesterday is no longer worth money. Why? Well, because the bond that's coming out tomorrow has a higher face yield. That is why the yields on bonds are increasing. Bond yield, by the way, when I say the yield on bonds, what I mean is the price of bonds is dropping. So typically speaking, interest rates and price of bonds work in inverse proportion. So as interest rates go up, the price of bonds drops. Why? It seems counterintuitive. The answer is because people are worried that the next increase interest rate increase makes the last bond worthless. This is what happened to Silicon Valley Bank, right? They banked on a certain facial rate of interest on the bonds they had bought. And then the Fed started issuing bonds at a much higher rate. And so all of the bonds that Silicon Valley Bank was banking on were now worthless. You couldn't sell them in the open market. Yesterday, President Biden announced student debt forgiveness for another tranche of Americans on Wednesday, months after the Supreme Court blocked the administration's most ambitious borrow relief plans. This is unconstitutional. It's already been declared he can't unilaterally simply get rid of student loan debt. He's doing it anyway, because this is what he does. The string of politically advantageous announcements comes thanks to the administration's use of existing programs that allow the government to waive debt for certain borrowers. The moves are separate from the administration's troubled attempt to cancel as much as 20 grand in student debt for any borrower earning less than $125,000 a year struck down by the Supreme Court. Wednesday's announcement of $9 billion in student debt cancellation for 125,000 borrowers, the latest in a string of sizable discharges, helps just a small slice of the more than 40 million people who own debt. But again, this is part of the inflationary policy of this administration is to basically blow money into the system by relieving debt. The administration is touting those cancellations on the same way. On the same week, most borrowers returned to making payments for the first time since they were paused in March 2020 as part of the COVID-19 pandemic relief. The piecemeal approach to debt cancellation adds up. The administration has now wiped out $127 billion in student debt, nearly one third of the projected cost of the failed mass cancellation plan. So the Supreme Court says you can't do it. Joe Biden just finds another way to do it. That's the way this works. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 